School of Grade 9 Science class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the electricity unit. I always like to look to see if I spell that stuff right. Electricity is one of the hardest words for me to spell. Um, so if you see a typo anywhere on here, I have typed electricity three times on my screen right now. Um, I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to carry on because it's likely I'm going to spell it wrong at some point here. All right, now that we got that out of the way, this is a little bit more into static electricity um, and what this push and pull between you know your hair and a balloon is when you rub it together is all about and then some of the technology that can, that can take advantage of these things here so let's get into it static electricity and forces uh, a force is defined as a push or a pull so if I push you or you push me that's a force being applied to one of us uh, an electric force is when you have a push or a pull between charged objects. Now, how does this all work? That's what we're going to get into. Uh, an electric force is an example of what we call action at a distance force, because this force can be applied to an object without touching it, uh, which is not what I can say for when I move this mouse around. I need to actually touch this mouse to apply a force to it. If I didn't, that would be amazing or my hand might have an electric force attached to it. But uh, electric forces don't need to be touching to act. So you've probably heard these things before. This is, these are the laws of electric charge or the laws of charge. Like charges repel or push apart from one another while opposites attract. Opposite charges attract or pull together. So in this diagram up here, we have a positive and a negative charge. We can think of this as a proton and an electron or a positively charged object and a negatively charged object. These two things are going to pull together. They're going to be attracted to one another. So when your hair is attracted to a balloon, one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Uh, in the same token below, if they're the same, they repel or they push apart from one another. So two positives push away from one another, they move this way, while um, two negatives will also push apart from one another. Uh, this means that positively charged areas will attract electrons to that space. So uh, if we have a whole bunch of electrons in a cloud up above, and we have a tree that's a little bit positively charged, lightning and sparks are examples of these. So lightning might come down from those clouds and uh, go to that positive area, come towards, come towards the Earth where the positive charges are more abundant. So a lightning is an example of moving um, electric charges. Uh, same with sparks, maybe when you're taking your sweater off and you get shocked. Um, electrons are moving towards a positive area. Remember it's really important that positive charges cannot move. Uh, it's only negative charges that can move. So this also means that negative and positively charged objects are attracted to one another. Now, not just neutrons, or sorry, not just protons and electrons, but we're talking like positively and negatively charged objects. So again, your hair being attracted to a balloon after you rub it on your head. We have seen people look like this regularly. Um, your hair and the balloon are different charges. Uh, one's positive and one is negative, so they're attracted together. And the hair is very light, so that's why it lifts up like this. We can also have neutral objects that are objects with positive and negative charges that are the same. But because negative charges can move, uh, neutral objects can often be attracted to other objects as well. So if you rub a balloon with your hair, the balloon will pick up some electrons and become negatively charged. We then bring it over to a wall it'll be attracted to a wall. What's all that about? Um, we haven't done anything to the wall. It shouldn't be positive. Um, what happens is that the electrons that are within the wall get pushed away from the negatively charged atoms uh, that are on the balloon. And that makes the wall seem positively charged and then it can stick to it. You are going to, uh, in a simulation that you'll do at the end of this lesson, you're going to explore that more. You're going to see uh, how that all works when a negative and positive charges uh, move around. So let's get into some technologies that we can use these electric um, forces for. So if we think about toner photocopiers, toner is not an ink. It's like a dry powder. 
So how does it get on paper and how does it act like ink? So first of all, light hits paper and reflects off the white part uh, of the copier. So if you're photocopying something, there's dark and white parts. Uh, the dark parts are the letters. So first of all, the light is going to reflect off of the um, all the white area. The reflected light hits the drum and removes static charge in this area. So it's going to get rid of the electrons that are in the area mirroring the part that is white on your piece of paper. Um, this toner that we have in the printer will then go over the drum and it will stick to the charged areas. So it's going to stick to the areas that were originally black on the paper, the part that the light did not reflect and remove. Uh, the paper will then roll over the drum and it has now uh, a stronger attraction for the toner. So the toner is picked up by the paper and then baked onto it. So this is a little bit of a complicated process. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know or watch this over again. Uh, take notes and go slowly. But essentially, you photocopy the paper and any part that is white has light reflected off of it. That light knocks any static electricity off of the drum so that the toner only sticks to the electricity, the, the electrified part, which is the part on the paper which was originally black. The paper will then roll over the drum and pick up that uh, toner, so then it will be baked onto the paper, and that is how printing works and can go so fast. Thank goodness for uh, the technology of, st of static electricity. A couple more. Uh, electrostatic air cleaners, so uh, it removes electrons, as I should say, it, it removes um, electrified particles from the air. Um, these charged particles are attracted to a plate and then they are stuck to it. So lots of dust and hair is uh, has a negative charge to it. So if it can be cleaned out by these electrostatic cleaners, that is great for our lungs. Uh, lightning rods are often uh, used or used more uh, in the olden days to uh, prevent lightning strikes, but they're placed on top of buildings uh, to protect the, protect the building from lightning. It provides essentially a safe passage for the lightning to get to the ground. So if lightning occurs near the building, the large amount of charge will pass through the lightning rod to the ground rather than the building. Um, it's not hugely common anymore to have these uh, your job now, what I'd like you to do is go to the simulation below here. You've probably seen these simulations before, the PHET simulations. Uh, it's really quite simple. What I'd like you to do uh, is check it out, uh, play with it a little bit, and then go through the different stages that are in the boxes and answer the few questions. And I believe after this, we have a quiz. So it is the first quiz in this unit. If you're ready for it, let me know. Uh, and again, thanks so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it and I will see you in class soon. Thanks.